coming up on We Want to Believe. Turns out the scratching was the missing dog. No cell service, nothing. It's like every horror movie cliche you'd ever want. I'm not gonna lie, kind of reflected our mood a bit. I'd like to thank you for watching. We want to believe and ask that if you enjoy our show, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like this video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. Now back to the show. According to the official website, the Canadian gold rush was profoundly shaped thanks to a simple, working class English prospector named William Billy Barker, who in 1862 spearheaded a 20 year, multi-billion dollar revolution that literally helped build the province of British Columbia. Barker's story began in the American gold fields in the mid 1800s, where people from all over the world traveled to seek their fortune. By the mid 1850s, gold finds were slowed and rumors surfaced of easy gold on the Fraser River. Barker, along with thousands of other men, headed to the British territory that is now British Columbia, Canada, and eventually prospectors made their way to the hills that surround Barkerville today. One of the first finds was by William Dietz, and a small town began to spring up around the area, optimistically named Richfield. Barker eventually ended up in Richfield, trying his hand at a few spots around Williams Creek, where his lack of success continued. As time passed, he decided to mine further down the creek, in the area below Richfield. Many people questioned his decision, saying he wouldn't find any gold there. Barker was finally proven right on August 17, 1862, when he and his crew struck gold. As a result, Barkerville became a cornerstone in the development of Canada and the founding of British Columbia. Today, Barkerville, named in Billy's honor, stands as a testament to British Columbia's golden beginnings. Declared a National Historic Site of Canada in 1924, and a provincial heritage property in 1958. Barkerville is now the largest living history museum in Western North America. Given its rich history, if you'll excuse the pun, Barkerville also has its share of ghost stories, which are told by the historical site staff and guests alike. There's been reports of poltergeist activity in some of the buildings, inspectors who appear and disappear right before people's eyes. The town post office, barber shop, courthouse and the St. George Bed and Breakfast are among the 125 standing buildings which are rumored to be haunted. This includes several buildings in the Chinatown area. Naturally, Barkerville has played host to a number of paranormal investigators and ghost hunting programs, with investigators and filmmakers alike eager to capture such activity on camera, which is why We Want to Believe has traveled several hours to see what they can find. We actually visited Barkerville as part of a two-part road trip, which included Mandy, the Haunted Doll, and Quinnell, which we covered off on a previous episode we wanted to believe. Once we had finished with Mandy, we headed to Wells, which is the last stop before historic Barkerville. The origins uh, of Barkerville, um, Barkerville, again, has a lot of, uh, has a lot of history, like the, the or, like the, basically the, the foundations of the place, and the, there's a lot of stories uh, to do with the Chinese community as well that are, you know, that run parallel with that place as well. We ended up staying at the Wells Hotel, which is almost 100 years old, which is old for this part of the world. Interest interestingly enough, one of the first thing we noticed uh, when we arrived was a poster of a dog who'd gone missing a couple of days earlier. When I was sort of taking my bags up to my room, which was next to the room Peter was supposed to have, uh, I kind of heard a strange scratching on the wall. I didn't really pay attention to it until it was very consistent. Turns out the scratching was the missing dog. Missing in this room. Number 15. He almost shared a bed with me. Didn't you, gal? Hey? Didn't you, gal? You're going to be famous if you come Well, you weren't going to starve to death too quickly, were you, Daisy? <laughs> so, not a haunting in this room, Peter, with the scratching on the walls, no, but a missing uh, dote. So we took the dog downstairs to the uh, hotel manager uh, who notified the owner that the dog had been found and they were most happy. So that, that's kind of a neat way to begin our, our adventure there, nothing paranormal, just um, it felt good to reunite the pet with, with its owner. When was the last time that room was cleaned? 
Uh, I did it a couple of days ago. That's probably when she must. But she went missing uh, not two nights ago. Daisy, come here. Why don't you go in the bar? We'll lock you in the bar. How about that? Our adventure in Barkerville began the following morning. Paranormal road trip day two. Yesterday we were in Quinell investigating Mandy, the haunted doll, allegedly haunted doll. Didn't really get much of it. Right now, this morning, we're in Wells, which is about 15, 20 minutes away from the historic town of Barkerville, which we've got access to for the entire day. So many different ghost stories associated with it. So much history. It's going to be a fun adventure. It's the first time we've really, other than O'Keefe Ranch, had full access to an entire facility for as long as we needed to be there. Uh, of course, myself, new cameraman Michael D. Stewart, Kara, and Peter are here. Excited uh, for the adventure. And if you can take a look around outside, we're in the middle of northern British Columbia. No cell service, nothing. It's like every horror movie cliche you'd ever want. It's been raining, it's supposed to rain off and on all day. There's snow in them, thar hills. And uh, yeah, excited. So we'll fill you in as we go along. Uh, should be a fun adventure. Looking forward to it. Uh, we went to the town and met our, our guide, Michelle, who is a historical interpreter and costumer of the location. She filled us in on the site's very rich history, told us some of the spooky stories related to it and some of the experiences she had had there as well. When, when we got there, we were greeted by uh, a fantastic lady called Michelle, and uh, she gave us the guided tour. Uh, first thoughts was, was how the hell can we cover this area in eight hours? Why get pepperoni sticks when you can have power sticks to go with your hickory sticks? My name is Michelle Liefertz and I'm a historical interpreter and a customer here in Barkerville. And I first started working here in 2000. For a while and then I can drive you to the cemetery that sounds awesome. Field, so you can take a look. Yeah, this is the best. Walking is always the best way to get a feel for everything, right? So Barkerville as a town is one of four towns that makes up the community of Williams Creek. And it was established in 1862 in... Um, ostensibly in August when Billy Barker made his strike, uh, which still through to present day, the uh, level of pay per linear foot still holds the title as the richest pay ever discovered. So when he hit pay here, a boom town was bound to spring up. And since that time, right until now, there has always been a living and working community here. So it has never technically been a ghost town because it's never been abandoned, but that is not to say there are not ghosts here. I mean, there's so many stories here, right? Each of the buildings has stories of the people. And um, so there's rumors of sightings or feelings in a number of the different buildings. The Theatre Royal is suggested to be a very haunted building. There have been sightings of things right from the El Dorado, you know, windows and, and things up in, in windows or, or curtains moving, uh, right up to the, probably right up to Richfield. I've always found the post office to be a really fascinating building. I've never experienced anything there myself, but every time I walk past it, I sort of go, I don't know, it's just a sense, right? It's just a sense. So to me, like when I come by, I'm, this is just always lit up at night. But what's fascinating to me is what you see out of the window in here. Like, I honestly, when I go through and at night and I look through that window, I can't say for certain I've ever seen a figure, but I swear there's shadows in there. Probably my own most extre extreme experience was when I arrived in 2000 to work here. I had wanted to come here since I was in grade four and I never got here until I was hired and I was walking from the visitor center uh, heading south towards Chinatown with the person introducing me and I got to about the bakery and I had a sudden memory of I knew what was coming as we were going here because I had a memory of walking in the other direction. Just yesterday I was walking in town with my daughters and uh, my daughter told me, she said, you know what's really weird, Mom, the first time I came here and she described my same experience. She'd never told me that before and I had that experience 21 years ago. We continued on to the church and a barber shop before stopping at the museum where there has been reports of activity. Wow. So this is from the haberdashery. 
<laughs> and uh, isn't that just a great word? I love that type of nursery. I know. So this was his shop. He came up to the colony in, yeah, in, in 1858 with about 300 black families because the American Civil War mm -hmm. and the early gold rush are 1861 to 65. So there was a big migration of, of um, colored people from California and he was instrumental in that. And he was an avid diarist, so he kept diaries of like just the regular goings on of the town. Mm -hmm. The Barkerville Hotel was our next stop and this is considered one of the many hot spots because so many people who were important to Barkerville are believed to have stayed there. It was originally very, very overwhelming because the, the whole site was, was it, there was like 126 cabins, including the courthouse at the top as well. So it kind of, there was a lot of, you know, there, there was a lot of ground to cover. So um, by the time we did the walkthrough, we got, uh, I got all the cameras set up, we got them into place. It was 12, one o'clock in the afternoon. About to set up the equipment right now and then begin our investigations. Stupid phone apps breed contempt. <laughs> Are you shooting them? I just did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What else can I do, Peter? We did the hot spots yeah. that were allegedly the most active. Didn't really give it enough time in a lot of places. You can't quantify a place and just say that it's not haunted. Or sorry, it's not active just because of the fact we've only been there for a few hours, but it would have been nice to spend another uh, another day there and it was just i felt like we were rushing around too much we weren't spending a lot of time in in the places and we didn't cover enough ground so um the plan was that night um were we were originally going to pack all the equipment up and go and then drive, head back home the next day but um I spoke to michelle and it was okay to leave a, a couple of cameras lying around and stuff like that i set cameras up in the church the old post office which michelle said that she seen something in the window of the post office and she, you know, she sensed that there was something going on in there as well. So we put one in there, we put one in the um, Barkerville Hotel, downstairs in the saloon area, and then there was uh, one upstairs in the hallway just to see how it goes and just like left it and we did the investigation the whole day. Moving on to Chinatown, we stopped outside a Chinese hall and made plans to return to investigate. As Michelle said, decisions made at this hall in particular impacted revolutions back in China at the time, back, you know, in the 1800s. So we got all of our equipment in order and set out. Um, this was a kind of an overwhelming task. We had like a good eight hours there. Half the time had been used up. So we were just really flying through everything, unfortunately. John, is there John not here? If there's anyone here, can you give us a sign or an indication you're here? Can you give us a knock, a bang? Can you move one of the snooker balls, the billiard balls on the table? It might have been my EMF effort. Do you have a little flash that's no. silent? Oh, okay. It might be a reflection of the spring. Oh, okay. It could be, uh, it would be I was like, <laughs> No sound, but just a little late. Hmm. That was my 
the shoulder pop in the theater. <laughs> It's ghostly bone crack. <laughs> Sucks being 49. <laughs> I don't hear any popping sounds, that's my hip. Oh, Jesus. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a new liver, but I don't think I can make that any sounds out of that. We conducted an RVP session there, then a spirit box session, but didn't get anything. Um, we'd hoped for better luck upstairs, so that's where we went. We began in John Knott's room as he was a historic Barkerville figure who also built a hotel. John, can you please step forward? Again, though, we didn't have any luck here. So we moved into the hallway, thinking that it might be a place where the energy from all the past guests will have a chance to manifest itself. I ran a spirit box session. Lester, are you here with us at the moment? Peter is going to be coming back. Do you want to talk to Peter? Would you rather talk to someone who has the same accent as you? All right. But again, no avail. At this point, uh, we were discouraged, as Barkerville was becoming like many other allegedly haunted paranormal hotspots. Lots of stories about activity, lots of teams saying they had stuff happen there, but once you go there, nothing much happens. Uh, we moved on to the Chinese Hall, hoping for better luck. But after an EVP and Spirit Box session there, our success rate had not improved. Um, when we got back outside, the weather had deteriorated and heavy rain was falling. I'm not going to lie, it kind of reflected our mood a bit at this point. We were tired and we were disappointed. We still had a few stops to make that would hopefully turn our luck around. 